Jean-Claude Van Damme. The mention of his name triggers images of flying roundhouse kicks and epic splits. He blessed the 80s and 90s with indisputable action blockbusters such as Kickboxer, Street Fighter, Bloodsport, Universal Soldier, and more, even continuing to kick ass in 2011's Expendables 2. Actor, karate champion, bodybuilder, Belgian Jean-Claude Van Damme was born October 18, 1960 and has impacted billions of people and inspired millions to train their bodies toward their potential. There's something about Van Damme that sets him apart from just anyone who can throw a high kick. An inner philosophy, a sense of life, a higher state of being that reaches right through the screen and infiltrates the motivation center of your brain. He possesses that calm, purposeful, relentless intention that propels those who acquire it to the highest echelons of achievement, be it fame and stardom, physical perfection, soulful enlightenment, or any kind of personal actualization. One can't help but wonder, what secrets did this man discover? One of Van Damme's greatest martial arts films reveals one of those secrets. While martial arts films may not usually be the greatest of films, certainly not in league with some of my personal favorites such as The Godfather, Interstellar, Star Wars Originals, or Joker, martial arts films can often make up for their dubious B-grade acting and holy plots with an arc of the lead actor that is packed with wisdom and insight, and a sense of life that points to possibilities of higher states of being and inspires watchers to awaken to those possibilities in themselves. One of Van Damme's cinematic masterpieces, Bloodsport, is such a film. In this video we will dive into 1988's Bloodsport and gather a deep understanding of a little known secret of the body and mind, which Van Damme delivers to us in a stunning performance as he portrays real life ninjutsu expert Frank Dukes and his quest to fight in the revered Kumite, a secret full contact no holds barred fighting tournament facilitated by the Mafia Triad in Hong Kong. Sit back and relax as we journey into a truly heroic story of purpose, honor, and inner strength. The story begins as Duke suddenly goes AWOL from his military base to fly to Hong Kong to fight in the Kumite. Before doing so, he makes a stop at the house of Senzo Tanaka, Duke's Shidoshi, which is a word from the ninjutsu martial art meaning senior teacher. It is here that we are introduced to the film's primary method of conveying meaning, the flashback. This is a relatively common technique in which filmmakers show how a character's past experiences impacted their perspective, their abilities, the course of their life, and so on. It also provides the audience with insight into the character's motivation, their reason why they must achieve. In the case of Bloodsport, it is revealed that Frank Dukes desires to fight in the Kumite to honor his Shidoshi, Senzo Tanaka, for essentially rescuing him from idle involvement with depraved teenagers and, by adopting Frank as his student, setting him on a path toward heroic moral character and self-esteem. A path, the existence of which only few are lucky to know. Shidoshi's own son, Shingo Tanaka, killed in an underground fight, had himself intended to make his father proud by fighting in the Kumite, and now Frank is determined to take on that responsibility. We see the abilities with which Senzo Tanaka endowed Frank Dukes, such as ninjutsu fighting technique, fighting blindfolded, lightning quick reflexes, enduring physical beatings, all of which will come to aid Dukes in the coming Kumite. There is one more critical flashback, which holds the key to the secret we are here to learn, Though I want to save that for the end because we'll have so much more impact on us that way. This moment, which you'll see very soon, is the culmination of Frank's training with Senzo Tanaka, as after it, Tanaka approves Dukes' graduation from his mentorship, telling Dukes that everything he wanted to teach him has been taught. In between this moment and the Kumite itself, there is a whole bunch of B-grade filler with some government stiffs chasing Frank around trying to take him back to base, a love interest with a reporter, and a friendship with another fighter. These scenes do somewhat convey Frank's character but are generally cheesy with poor acting, serving generally to pad the film with filler to make it feature length. We'll gladly skip all of that. As I mentioned, the Kumite is a secret invite only full contact event facilitated by the triad. The accepted attitude is, if he dies, he dies. This Kumite is set to be the biggest ever, with fighters from all over the world attending. The Kumite is a tradition that began hundreds of years ago, first used by the Kokoryukai the Black Dragon Society to measure the fighting skills and spirit of its members. Every five years, the best fighters in its ranks would face each other in full contact with one winner emerging as the superior warrior, the champion. There are three ways to win. One, you knock your opponent out. Two, the opponent quits and shouts mate, which means uncle. Three, you throw your opponent off the runway. Over three days, one fighter must prove himself to be the best, the mightiest warrior. 
Frank could be the first Westerner to ever win the Kumite, but first to prove the authenticity of his invite from Senzo Tanaka, and that Tanaka really was his Shidoshi. Frank has to show the Din Mark, the death touch, before his invitation can be honored. No doubt about the authenticity there. As the Kumite gets underway, we see a variety of different styles competing. It's interesting to see this form of mixed martial arts in a 1988 film, predating the formation of the UFC by five years and predating mainstream interest in UFC by around 10 or 15 years. The film makes clear that Frank Dukes is in a league above most of the fighters, easily winning his bouts, just like another competitor, the film's villain, Korean Chung Lee. Chung Lee has never been defeated. He holds all the records and he straight up killed a guy in the last Kumite, having kicked him in the throat and proceeded to watch him die. He looks the part and fights congruously to his character, a dishonorable, vengeful, cold-blooded killer. He is shown to easily overpower the early round opponents. He possesses no mercy and takes joy in inflicting pain. When he fights Frank's friend Ray, after knocking him to the ground, he head stomps him and hospitalizes him. He even repeats his antics from the last Kumite, sadistically murdering an opponent who is already out cold. After he kills the guy, he tells Frank, you are next. He is a truly hateable, yet extremely competent villain who poses a mortal threat to Frank Dukes. Before the ultimate showdown, there are some really impressive scenes of Van Damme showing off his awesome flexibility and meditative focus. Whether the fountainhead of this film's lesson is the real life Frank Dukes or the writers of the screenplay, it is Van Damme whose artistry brings them to life and allows us to learn those secrets. When it comes time for Frank to fight Chung Lee in the finals, we really believe that Frank is in mortal danger. It's literally win or die. And we are here to see whether or not good can triumph over evil. As the fighters prepare for the fight, we see Chung Lee's assistant pass him what appears to be a white tablet, which he hides in his shorts. Clearly Chung Lee has some sinister intentions. As the fight begins, it is clear that Frank is the superior martial artist. Chong Li gets in one or two decent strikes, though Frank's finesse is evidently superior as the fight becomes rather one-sided, with Frank landing multiple consecutive blows. That's when we see Chong Li reach into his shorts for the white tablet. He crushes it into a powder and casts it into Frank's eyes, rendering Frank essentially blind. Frank flails about as Chong Li lands brutal, dishonorable blows against the incapacitated Frank. With the walls closing in on Frank, it's unclear how Frank can possibly get out of this. And that brings us to the flashback, which is the reason I made this whole video. Because the particular moment contains such a valuable life lesson, which we can all benefit from learning. Again, this scene was actually played in the beginning of the film, though I think it has much more impact right here. So please enjoy this great scene in full. To me, here is the great inside of the film. In the rope's harness, Frank is clearly in a state of great suffering. He would like to relax into the position, but the pain is overwhelming. The advice that Shidoshi Tanaka gives him for such a moment is, practice until you can meditate and nothing can distract you, so that you see and feel nothing except your own energy. And so Frank follows this advice. He meditates and sees and feels nothing except his own energy so that nothing can distract him. 
and his suffering eases and passes. Even when the rope breaks, he is unreactive and remains calm. And so now we see the impact that this lesson has on Frank during his fight with the evil Chong Li. Frank is screaming in terror that begins to follow the wisdom of Tanaka and moves beyond the pain into a calm state from which he is able to exercise all that he has learned and triumph over Chong Li. As one final testament to Frank's character, we see Frank give mercy to Chong Li, demanding that he say Mate to surrender, rather than finishing him when he's almost out. And so what we can learn for our own lives is that generally, that which we desire is on the other side of suffering. We cannot go around that suffering, we must pass through it. And to do so, we must bring our focus to ourselves, to our own energy, our own being, our own intellect, our own soul, and from such a place, we can get to that place where we really want to be. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had a great time watching Bloodsport three times to prepare this video, and I hope you enjoyed my take on it. If you did, please take the time to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.